planet Earth is home to a wondrous diversity of life. More than a million species are known, and perhaps as many remain undiscovered, and far more have existed in the past which are no longer present today. Where did all of this life come from? How is life so wonderfully adapted to the environments in which organisms find themselves? Well, these are ancient questions. In fact, some of the earliest philosophical arguments we know of, dating back to Thales and Anaximander and Anaximenes, the early Greek philosophers, were about the evolution of life. There are different ideas as to how life came to be in its current state. The evolutionary model holds that the types of organisms which are alive today, our modern mammals and reptiles and teleost fish and corals and flowering plants, etc., that these living things have not always existed. Instead, uh, going back into earlier periods in Earth's history, uh, the ancestors of modern life existed and that these ancestral forms uh, were typically simpler in the beginning, and that through a series of gradual transitions, uh, these early, more primitive forms of life were gradually transformed into the biodiversity which we have today. Now, evolution could be wrong. In fact, all ideas in science could be wrong. One of the central tenets of science is that one must doubt all scientific ideas. You are not supposed to believe what your teachers tell you or believe what your textbook tells you. If you do this, you're doing it wrong. Science not only thrives on doubting and questioning, scientific thought actually requires that. So if you do not doubt or question evolution, as a scientific thinker, you are simply not doing your job. And so it is appropriate to wonder how has life come to be in its current state. However, scientific thought does not end with the questioning, however. It is therefore not appropriate in a science class simply to say, oh, let us teach all of the possibilities uh, and weigh them equally. You know, all models, you know, should be presented. In science, what one then does is then test the predictions of models and gather evidence. In science, we come up with ideas and alternate ideas, but then we test them to decide which ideas are supported by evidence. Uh, in modern biological classes, the evolutionary model is very prominently taught. It is not dogma, it can be questioned. However, the reason it is taught is because the simply overwhelming amount of evidence which supports this. When one tests the evolutionary model using the fossil record, using uh, comparative anatomical evidence, when one compares genomes and searches genetic evidence, when one compares embryos, when one looks to classify life, when one looks at the amount of variation which exists in groups of organisms, the overwhelming evidence supports the evolutionary model and the evolutionary model alone. That does not mean that you, as a science and a biology student, should not question evolution. If you can come up with alternate ideas, test them, and provide evidence for them, well then, you will prove you know, one idea wrong, and if your model turns out to be correct, well, all of science will be grateful, and you will be rich and famous. Your picture, your ideas will be presented in every biology uh, textbook from this point forward. So, uh, while in this course we pursue the evolutionary model because of the incredible amount of evidence which already supports this, you are encouraged to doubt and to question this and to look for alternatives. This is not something specific to evolution. This is how science thrives and you are uh, encouraged to do this in all realms of scientific thought.